Also known as the Syrian Civil Defense, the White Helmets essentially consist of a group of volunteers who risk their lives engaging in rescue missions aimed at finding and removing people from the rubble in the aftermath of the devastating Syrian regime's airstrikes. The group rose to fame after footage increasingly emerged across social and then conventional media showing their rescue operations throughout the course of the Syrian Civil War, particularly when the regime began bombarding East Aleppo. Unconfirmed pictures have emerged across social media over the last few years that depicts a number of white helmets pledging allegiance to Islamist groups, including Al-Qaeda offshoots. While we don't know if any of this is true, what we do know is that the white helmets have done extraordinary work on the ground, saving by their count over 114,000 and have risked their lives in the process. In spite of the way this is being framed in the Canadian media, we should try to be sober about both romanticizing and sensationalizing the roles of Israel and Jordan in this operation. This mission was carried out at the request of states like Canada, not out of the altruistic imperatives of either Israel or Jordan. Both countries have been important players in the conflict, and both have contributed to protracting and destabilizing the country. In recent weeks, close to 300,000 were displaced due to the Syrian regime's offensive in the southern part of the country. The response? They were turned away by both Jordanian and Israeli authorities during their time in need. Just weeks ago, after years of supporting rebel factions in Syria through its CIA operations room, Jordan claimed that it would only hand over the border crossing with Syria to the country's legitimate authority, i.e. the Syrian government. And Israel, likewise, claimed that it had no problem with the Syrian regime after spending years treating and equipping rebel fighters in the occupied, not controlled Golan Heights. So we should really exercise caution in taking this entire mission out of its geopolitical context. Russia, through years of political, diplomatic, and military maneuvering, has now convinced the international community to accept Assad, and as a result, these states are slowly normalizing relations with them. As per usual, the civilians wind up being caught in the crosshairs.